Hello everyone and thank you all for joining us for this session. My name is Jessica Fuentes with Proserva IT and I'm going to be your in-session co-organizer. I would like to take a quick moment to introduce the speaker for today's session, Alex Wilson, co-founder of The Giving Box. Welcome, Alex. Thank you, Jessica. And thanks for everyone who's tuning in. Um, I know it's, it might have been a long day if you've been watching uh, webinars all day, so I'll, I'll try to keep this pretty fun and quick. Um, you know, today we're going to talk about crypto donations. You've probably heard about them more and more. Um, but first, you know, I'll start with an introduction. I'll talk about what is crypto, you know, why should nonprofits care about crypto donations, and then how to actually fundraise crypto. Um, so to kick us off, quick intro and sort of background on myself and the team. Um, you know, before starting the Giving Block with my co-founder, Pat Duffy, I was a management consultant working mostly with Fortune 500 companies on emerging technology. Um, so that was, you know, AI, IoT, blockchain, cryptocurrency. And that's how I got into investing and trading cryptocurrencies. And, you know, when 2017 rolled around, you probably saw some headlines about Bitcoin going up to 20,000 for the first time. Um, and notice that people that were making a lot of money in crypto were looking to actually donate their crypto to nonprofits, except that most nonprofits didn't have an easy way to accept it and they weren't really sure where to get started. Um, so the idea for the giving block was born with my friend Pat, um, who was working at a nonprofit. Fast forward a couple of years, and now we work with over 130 different nonprofits, including some of the biggest ones in the world, like Save the Children, United Way Worldwide, and American Cancer Society. So I'm going to quickly explain what crypto is. I'm going to try to keep it pretty high level because we could spend all day on this um, and ultimately focus on what crypto means for nonprofits more so than getting in the weeds on the technical side of things of how crypto actually works. If there's one thing to know about crypto, it's that it's kind of a, a it's really disintermediating um, you know, processes. If we use a bank as an example over here on the left, you know, typically when you're sending money to someone, it's going through, let's say, a bank or government, uh, some sort of middleman. Cryptocurrency, um, you know, really removes that middleman where it's truly peer to peer. So when I send money to, let's say, my co-founder, Pat, if I send him Bitcoin, it's truly going from my Bitcoin wallet to his Bitcoin wallet without passing through a bank or other sort of intermediary in the middle. Um, so it's a much more efficient, you know, process where you can sort of cut out the middleman. But, you know, a little bit more on that later. A couple key characteristics of why crypto is basically better than traditional currencies and why it's gotten so much uh, adoption recently. These are just a, a handful of sort of the key features. If you look at crypto, um, especially Bitcoin in particular, um, you know, I can send a transaction to someone from where I'm in Washington, D.C. to someone on the other side of the world and let's say Tokyo, and it's going to cost, you know, uh, maybe a dollar to send that transaction, no matter how large the amount is. So there's people that move hundreds of millions of dollars and it arrives just a minute later or a couple of minutes and usually costs about a dollar or two. Um, so significantly cheaper and faster than, let's say, doing a bank wire, which tends to be a huge pain. Um, another cool thing about crypto is, and, and Bitcoin in particular, um, it can't be counterfeited, you know, as you've probably seen, especially with sort of the, the economic issues we've been having over the last year. Um, the government's been printing a lot of money um, and, you know, people also try to counterfeit that money. Um, with Bitcoin, there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin. So there's a fixed supply and you can track every Bitcoin on a public blockchain. So you're always going to know if you're getting a, a real Bitcoin. There's no way to have a fake Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. Um, I mentioned some of these other characteristics already, like it being international and peer to peer. I don't want to get too caught up on this part of the presentation, but wanted to give kind of a high level overview of some of the key features. But if any of these pieces aren't clear, you know, please feel free to, to drop your questions for the end. We'll be sure to save some time at the end for questions. So, um, you know, this next section, why crypto donations? Um, and I'm going to keep this moving pretty quickly because I know we've only got about 30 minutes. Um, you know, one thing that's often surprising when we're speaking to people is I think a lot of people don't realize how many people are actually already using crypto. So last year, the latest research showed that there's over 100 million people using crypto around the world. Um, almost half of that 100 million is in the US um, or North America. 
Um, and you can actually buy crypto at a lot of sort of what I would say mainstream or common places that people are surprised by. You can buy it on Cash App, you can buy it on PayPal, you can buy it on Robinhood. It's getting easier and easier to use um, as you know more people use it and the technology is built out further. You know, in the 90s, when the internet first started getting popular, it was pretty hard to use. It wasn't until, you know, 10 years later that it was actually commonly used by, you know, almost everyone. Um, crypto is going through that similar sort of adoption rate where it's getting easier and easier to use. Um, and it's, you know, as a result, really reaching a lot more people. Um, and for example, you know, the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the U.S. is now largest than the largest stock brokerage in the US. So there's more crypto users than there are Charles Schwab users and there are Fidelity users and there are E-Trade users buying stocks. I mean, even if you compare it to apps for payments like Cash App or Venmo, it has significantly more users you'll see over here on the left. Um, and, you know, for a lot of these applications, it's pretty heavy with younger users. So it's probably not surprising to hear that a lot of these users, you know, more than half are millennials and Gen Zs. Um, they tend to be the earliest adopters of the technology, but as it gets easier to use, we're seeing older demographics uh, use this technology as well, especially with companies like PayPal and you know Goldman Sachs even getting into crypto now. So you might be asking yourself, you know, why are people going to donate crypto instead of, let's say, using a credit card or other traditional methods? The short answer is taxes. From a tax perspective, in the U.S. and some other countries. Um, it's just like a stock donation in the sense that the donor isn't paying capital gains taxes uh, and they get a fair market value deduction on their tax return. Um, if you look over here on the left, this chart will show an example of when someone would donate $250,000, what the difference in their write-off is, how much a nonprofit gets, and ultimately their tax liability. So not only are they getting a higher write-off, the donor, but the nonprofit is also getting more money. Um, so it's really a win-win all around and can amount to pretty significant amounts. You know, in most cases in the U.S., it could be anywhere from 20 to 30 uh, percent difference. So it's it's really pretty significant. And because of that, we're seeing most of these crypto donors are only donating in crypto um, because they don't want to sell their crypto and then not be able to donate as much. So they're going to nonprofits that accept crypto, even if it isn't necessarily the nonprofit they normally support. Um, and what we're finding too is, you know, related to this is most of the donors that are donating crypto are new donors, or if they were existing donors, they're often able to donate more now because they can donate their crypto directly. You know, their financial advisors are always going to tell them to donate their most highly appreciated assets first. And for a lot of people, that's crypto. Um, you know, pretty much everyone who's bought crypto in the last 10 years uh, has pretty significant gains. Um, so there's a lot of people out there with a, with a tax incentive to give crypto. So now we'll jump into how to fundraise crypto. Looks like we're doing OK on time so far. Um, you know, just to demonstrate this, you know, I'll do a really quick demo. Um, so I'm going to jump over here to another screen now. For the sake of the example, I'm going to use one of our clients, United Way Worldwide. Um, on our website, each nonprofit has a profile set up. Um, and an interesting thing we've noticed actually is that even though this widget is on our website and the nonprofit's website, about 80% of that donation volume is actually coming through our website, through our efforts of helping our clients get found by donors. Uh, but to run through a quick demo, um, over here on the right is the actual donation widget. So you can donate Bitcoin, you can donate Ethereum, you can donate a handful of other cryptocurrencies. Um, we're in the process of adding even more. The main reason we support so many different cryptocurrencies is because trading from one cryptocurrency to another in a lot of countries is a taxable event. So you want to be able to offer the cryptocurrency that is appreciated for your donors. Um, and for a lot of them, that's going to be Bitcoin, but for some, it might be something else. So just for the sake of an example, let's say I want to donate 0 0.25 uh, Bitcoin. It's going to show me the real time US dollar value of that donation. So that's about $7,700 right now. Then the donor is going to click continue. They're going to be prompted to enter their name, email and address. Um, in the case of United Way, they allow anonymous donations. So if a donor wanted to, they could skip this form and continue anonymously. 
But even if they're donating anonymously, they're going to be prompted to enter at least their email if they want to get a tax receipt. So let's say I enter my email here, alex at the giving block.com. I'll click get receipt. And then on this last page, I'll actually complete the donation. So depending on how familiar you are with crypto, uh, this page might look a little bizarre, but ultimately what the donor needs is this wallet address that I'm highlighting here. Um, and you can think of this almost as a bank account number, except instead of logging into their bank account, they're opening up their Bitcoin wallet and they're copy and pasting this wallet address as the destination. Once the donor sends that donation to this address, our system is going to see that transaction come through. As soon as it confirms a transaction, it's going to pull out that donation data and put it into a pre-formatted tax receipt for the donors. So they'll automatically get that in their email a couple minutes later. For the nonprofit getting the donation, it's going to come directly into the account that we set up for the nonprofit. And the nonprofits have an option to have the cryptocurrency automatically converted into US dollars. So you don't want to, so you don't have to worry about the volatility. If you decided you wanted to hold on to the crypto, you can do that too. But you know, the majority of our clients opt for the automatic conversion feature. So that's a quick demo, but you know, I'm happy to talk more about this in detail. If um, you want, you can also head over to our website and book a demo at thegivingblock.com. Uh, we're happy to do the demo anytime you want and, and go through that in a little bit more detail. And of course, a little bit slower. So a couple common misconceptions about fundraising crypto that we hear a lot. Um, we often hear from nonprofits, well, our donors don't use Bitcoin, they're older. Um, you know, that's something we hear, I would say, probably almost every day. Um, but as we all know, donor demographics are changing pretty quickly. Um, and if you didn't accept Bitcoin, you wouldn't necessarily know if your donors use Bitcoin. Um, and that kind of leads us to the, the other common misconception we hear that no one's offered us Bitcoin before. Um, and you know what we found is since most of these are new donors, donors aren't necessarily reaching out to nonprofits asking them to accept Bitcoin. They're just going to nonprofits that already accept Bitcoin um, because their assumption is that nonprofit isn't set up to accept Bitcoin. So they're going to go to one where they can find it on their website and do it on their own. Another one that we hear a lot is it doesn't fit our brand. We don't know much about Bitcoin. We don't really fit into this ecosystem. Um, and you know, it, there's no sort of necessary brand requirements or certain kinds of nonprofits that need to align with the crypto community. It can really be any type of nonprofit. We work with small nonprofits that do less than a million revenue a year, and we work with massive nonprofits like United Way, which do you know probably about a billion dollars a year in revenue. Uh, we work with all sorts of different shapes and sizes of nonprofits, all sorts of different causes. Um, it, it doesn't have anything really to do with the nonprofit's brand as long as you have a good brand um, and are able to reach your followers and reach your audience. That's what's most important. So a couple you know, quick steps on how to actually accept donations. And this is, of course, relatively high level. Um, you know, in terms of the sort of features and functionality of accepting crypto, we have things like automatic conversion to US dollars, so you don't have to worry about converting it. Uh, the automatic donor receipts, so you don't have to manually send those out. Uh, we have this set up in the most compliant way possible, so it's compliant with all the local laws and regulations, the government agencies, all that good stuff. Uh, the fiat off ramps, so you can easily withdraw the converted US dollars to your bank account. And it's even FDIC insured in the meantime until you withdraw it, um, which is really great. So you don't have to you don't have to rush to make a transfer or anything like that. Um, and getting set up with us is is relatively easy. Uh, you know, we are the only solution that has made a product tailored to the nonprofit market for crypto donations. So even the onboarding, the integration, the reporting, and the data, it's all nonprofit friendly and tailored to what a nonprofit is looking for and what a nonprofit needs. Um, so if you decide to accept crypto, we can help you get up and running pretty quickly. Um, so there's three different types of crypto fundraising um, and sort of three different ways you can interact with donors or get donations. Uh, one is, of course, the donors who are coming to your website. So if you accept crypto donations, we would help you set up a page that says donate cryptocurrency and it would have that widget you saw earlier. So donors could donate directly on your page without having to leave. And that integration is literally a copy and paste really, really easy. It would be less than an hour of time for your web developer to get that page set up. 
Then there's crypto donors who are just Googling, you know, donate Bitcoin, donate cryptocurrency or nonprofits that accept crypto. Um, that's another way some donors come in. And then the third and most common is the more active crypto fundraising. Um, and often that's coming through our website. So I mentioned earlier about 80% of donations are coming through our website. Um, and that's through our sort of active efforts of working with the you know larger crypto community. We work with most of the large media outlets to either get press coverage for our clients or write op-eds op about why people should be donating crypto, um, you know, working with corporate partners uh, to help them with their CSR programs and donating to the causes we work with. Um, because just like individuals, companies have a similar tax incentive for donating crypto. Um, and as you can imagine, a lot of these big companies in crypto uh, have quite a bit of crypto too. Um, and actually half of our donation volume comes from our corporate partners. Um, so they're all looking to give back, especially with crypto, you know, really going crazy these last couple of years. So this is a, a quick outline of an approach to crypto fundraising. You know, the first part, of course, is always planning it, getting your sort of your, your media guides together, your marketing materials together, um, getting partners involved. We develop what we call marketing toolkits. So you have examples and templates for how to put out a press release or how to tweet about it in an effective way. Uh, then, of course, there's the actual announcement. Uh, often you can do that through events or through partnerships or even existing you know, uh, initiatives that your, your organization is running. Um, a lot of crypto fundraising can be done in parallel with what you're already doing. Um, and, and it's pretty easy just to mix in some crypto messaging into your existing you know, digital marketing strategy. Uh, once you actually launch, we help spread the word. Uh, we help you keep that drumbeat going year round. You know, there's plenty of giving year round whenever um, people find you. It's not necessarily just an end of year giving thing, although we do see a lot of end of year gifts. Um, it's really important to stay engaged with this community year round. Um, and then basically capitalizing on major events or partnerships um, or, or upcoming events. Um, then, of course, it's important to keep your donors updated, give them, you know, a recap of what's going on, what you're using the money for, uh, that sort of things like you would do with your regular donors. So it's pretty similar to what you would do for your regular fundraising initiatives, except it's in a crypto context. And we help you get the word out in a crypto friendly way. We always joke that you know, we want to help you message this as if you kind of, you know, talk the crypto talk. We're always worried that our nonprofits are going to write Bitcoin as two words because that would scare donors away. Um, we really help you, you know, fit into this community and, and meet those donors. So I think I, I kept that within the 30 minutes, um, so we should have a little bit of time now for questions. Um, and if we don't get to your questions, feel free to either email our general email at info at the giving block dot com and definitely go to our website and book a demo too. So we can do kind of a, a longer version of this and go through a, a more detailed demo. Or you can email me directly at Alex at the Giving Block or my co-founder Pat at thegivingblock.com. Um, but now I'm going to switch over to the Q&A screen and stop sharing my screen here so we can take some questions. Thank you, Alex. I have one question. Uh, is the last question I can see here. It says, does it cover Canadian currency for Canadian charities as easy as it does for U.S. charities in U.S.? Uh, yeah, you're asking if it's as easy to get set up for Canadian charities as U.S. charities? Yes. Uh, the setup process is, is pretty much the same, although you would still be getting U.S. dollars instead of Canadian dollars. Um, so you'd want to make sure your, your bank account is compatible with, you know, incoming U.S. dollar transactions. Thank you. Um, so Jessica, should I just go through some of these ones in the, the Q&A yes. thing? OK, so. Uh, it's confusing. I don't think that's a question. Uh, do you think it's safe for nonprofits to hold on to cryptocurrency or should a nonprofit acquired and then dump it soon after it amassed a profit? Our nonprofit was gifted with stock and we were advised to sell and deposit the amount of the stock quickly. Um, I mean, we can't give specific advice on that. In general, though, our nonprofits apply the same gift acceptance policy that they apply to stock donations, which typically is to 
convert the crypto to cash immediately. Um, and we offer that feature, so it would be an automated, um, you know, automatic automated process. So you don't have to worry about manually converting it. It would just come into your account. It would be automatically converted, and then you can withdraw it to your bank account and use it like you normally would. Um, so Jenny, I hope that answered your question. But if not, feel free to to put in a follow up question in the chat. Um, an anonymous question: What's the best company to use? I'm contacted a lot by many people. Um, if you could clarify that question, that'll be helpful. But um, you know, I'm of course biased. But if you're talking about accepting crypto donations, I'm going to say we're the best company to use, uh, since we're the only one tailored to the nonprofit market. Um, this other question, also anonymous, is that a donor advised fund? Uh, we are not a donor advised fund. Uh, the way we set it up, uh, the donation is always going directly from the donor to the crypto exchange account we set up for you all. So think about it almost like setting up an account with let's say Fidelity or Charles Schwab to accept stock donations, except in this case, uh, it's a cryptocurrency exchange account and we have a nice widget on the front end to make accepting it easier. And we're also offering, you know, sort of the added services of helping you get found by donors. Um, but no, we are not a donor advised fund. Uh, another question on here, also anonymous. How can I buy for the organization using Bitcoin? Um, if you're asking how your organization can buy Bitcoin, um, you know you can do that through an exchange account, and we could help you with that as well. Although that's not something we commonly see, we're really specializing in helping nonprofits accept Bitcoin donations. Um, another anonymous question is: Does the Giving Block support nonprofits and charities outside of the U.S., like for issuing donor tax receipts? Um, the answer is yes, we do work with nonprofits outside of the US. For example, we have clients in the UK and throughout Europe in uh, Austria and Switzerland and I think a couple other countries in Europe, as well as we recently had our first few clients in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and we support, I think it's 40 or 50 different countries um, we're set up to support. Um, and for the tax receipts, you know, the tax receipts are a little bit different for each country. Um, so you'd have to check on the specific country in terms of how the tax benefits are. Um, but the receipt that we have is relatively standardized. Um, but if you have a specific um, question about a country, please, you know, reach out afterwards and, and send me an email and we can talk about that. Uh, Another question, does it convert to Canadian currency for Canadian charities as easily as it does for US charities in US? Right now, um, no matter which country you're in, it's converting to US dollars. We're working on added functionality to support other local currencies like the Canadian dollars, um, but we haven't gotten there yet. So for now, it's US only or US dollars only. Another similar question, does it matter where the charity is registered like Germany as well? Um, it, it does matter and we can support a lot of countries, not every country yet, but we're working on adding more and more. Unfortunately, I don't think Germany is on our supported list yet, but if you have another entity somewhere else in Europe, even some of the neighboring countries like Austria or Switzerland, um, we can work with those countries. And in some cases, you know, we've worked with organizations that might have offices and entities around the world. Um, so it's a matter of, of picking one that's in a supported jurisdiction. Another question is how to contact us. Um, let me type my email in the chat here so that everyone has that. And you can email me directly afterwards with questions. Uh, another question on here is what percentage of donation go does your company keep? Uh, so that depends. Uh, there's different packages and different tiers, um, but I'm happy to jump on a call and, and walk through those different options if you shoot me an email. Um, another question on here is if we use another giving platform, fundraise up, would we use the giving block as a second platform? Um, yes, in a sense, you'd be using us in, in parallel with that, or you could, um, you know, I'm not too familiar with fundraise up. We don't have an integration with them yet, but we are working on integrations with a lot of other fundraising platforms. Um, but in general, you typically be using us in parallel of your existing uh, marketing and fundraising campaigns. Um, another question on here, and, and feel free to keep typing in questions. I'll just keep answering these rapid fire until we run out of time. 
Um, another question on here is, can a nonprofit schedule an automatic withdrawal when the donated crypto reaches a specific exchange rate? Um, we don't have it set up where it would automatically exchange at a certain rate. There's really just two options right now. Either it's automatically converted when the donation comes in, or uh, you can hold on to the crypto and decide when you want to sell it. Um, so if you wanted to, you could, you know, hold on to the crypto and, uh, you know, say we're going to sell it at X amount and then you could sell it then. Um, and I know we're getting close to the end of the time. So if I don't get to your question, you know, feel free to shoot me an email and I encourage everyone to schedule a demo on our website too. That's probably the best way to, uh, you know, really get a detailed uh, conversation. Uh, would both platforms be an integrated widget on our site? Um, yeah, adding our widget to your site is as easy as copy and pasting an iframe code. Uh, really, really easy integration. Typically, we set up a page under other ways to give specific to donating cryptocurrency. Um, that's how most of our clients do it. Next question on here is does giving block work or has the capabilities to integrate with Dynamics 365? Um, we don't currently have an integration with Dynamics 365, um, but if this is a question more around sort of donor data and, and that sort of compatibility, all of our donor reports and, and donor data is uh, pretty nonprofit friendly for being able to easily upload that into your CRM. Um, and we are working on more and more CRM integrations. We just integrated with uh, Neon One or, or rather Neon CRM, and we're working on a lot of the other major CRM integrations this year as well to make that as easy as possible. Um, and yeah, happy to schedule calls with people if they have more questions or answered over email. Um, you know, we'll be available. Thanks so much, Jessica. Bye.